Aviation history is littered with abandoned aircraft variants. There was the A380-900, a stretched version of the A380 that never drummed up any orders. There was the 767X, a stretch to the 400ER that was abandoned in favor of the 777. There was even a 747 Trijet, which was later scrapped when development proved too complex. While it's cool to imagine what if with these planes, they rarely garner any attention once abandoned. There's a good reason for that. Boeing and Airbus treat their development as sunk costs. Once they get rid of a concept, they never revisit it. But the A350-800, a variant that was abandoned back in 2014, could prove to be different. Because given the state of the aviation industry today, it might make sense for Airbus to dust off the cobwebs and build the type after all. Let me explain. First, a bit of history. When Airbus announced the XWB family back in 2006, it came in three distinct flavors. The 800, the 900, and the 1000. As you might imagine, the 800 was the baby of the family, carrying just about 275 passengers and sporting a range of 8200 nautical miles. This would have put it squarely in competition with the 787-9, the middle child of Boeing's new 787 family. Contrary to popular belief, the A350-800 actually sold pretty well at first. By the end of 2008, the Type had 182 orders, which is actually more than the A350-1000 has today. But as time passed, nearly all of its customers turned their backs, with most converting their orders to larger A350 variants. By 2014, only 16 orders remained on its backlog, at which point the airplane got the axe. Now, the 800's cancellation was the 787's gain, and today, the 787-9 is the world's most popular wide-body variant, with 882 order to date. It has a seemingly perfect blend of range, efficiency, and capacity. And you could make the case that it affords the most operating flexibility of any long-range airliner, with the ability to profitably serve long, thin routes, and highly trafficked routes alike. Now, the type of flexibility that the Dash 9 offers will be absolutely critical to airline success in a post-COVID world. Prior to the pandemic, airlines were already moving away from jumbo jets and the drop in demand that COVID's induced will further accelerate the transition away from these really big airliners. While no one is purchasing new aircraft right now, the 787-9 is perfectly positioned to be a strategic and highly versatile replacement for the likes of the A380, the 747, and the 777-300ER. All of this begs the question, should Airbus relaunch the comparably sized A350-800 to challenge it well, there are a couple of reasons that Airbus might seriously consider it. For one, it could be developed fairly cheaply and fairly quickly. Again, the 800 was launched in 2006, but it wasn't canceled until 2014. This means Airbus must have gotten deep into development before pulling the plug. Assuming that the blueprints still exist somewhere, this would give the company a nice head start, ensuring the plane hits the market sooner rather than later. In addition, building the 800 could help extend the life of the A350 program. The program is pretty healthy right now, but it might not stay that way indefinitely. That's because the A350-1000, the largest A350 variant, appears vulnerable. The 1000 is responsible for just 18% of all A350s ordered, and its 370 seat capacity puts it firmly in jumbo jet territory. Given that Airbus sunk 13 billion inflation-adjusted dollars into the A350's development, I'm sure the folks in Toulouse are keen on keeping it around for quite some time to ensure an adequate return on investment. Building the A350-800 could help establish a new revenue stream to keep the program humming along should the 1000 continue to fade. At face value, all of this seems like a no-brainer for Airbus, but I'm sure some of you are skeptical, and rightfully so. A reasonable question to ask is why airlines reacted so differently to the 787-9 and the A350-800. 
If they're both the same size and have the same range, why did airlines embrace the Dash 9 and completely abandon the 800? Well, it can all be boiled down to airframe optimization. You see, when Boeing or Airbus build a new aircraft family, one of its variants will act as a reference design. Essentially, they'll optimize the plane's proportions, such as fuselage width, wing length, and engine size, around that specific variant. From there, they'll either add or remove fuselage sections to either stretch or shrink it, creating these smaller and larger variants that round out the family. This approach allows Boeing and Airbus to fill as many airplane segments as possible, but the stretching and squeezing also results in performance penalties. And these penalties tend to disproportionately affect the shrunken variants, since they are more prone to being overweight. This was exactly the case for the A350-800, and the impact on fuel burn was pretty severe. According to John Leahy, Airbus's former COO, the 800's fuel burn was a couple percentage points higher than the other A350 variants, and extensive tinkering to its design yielded no significant performance changes. When compared to the fuel burn of the expertly optimized 787-9, the 800 was much less attractive. That being said, it's been nearly 15 years since the A350-800 was launched, and technology sure has matured in that time frame. If Airbus were to give it another shot, they could surely squeeze out a bit more efficiency with just minor modifications. They could probably accomplish this with the engine alone, since Rolls-Royce, the A350's sole engine supplier, has a history of pushing out engine upgrade packages. For instance, the Trent 1000s they're building today are 3% more efficient than the first ones delivered to customers back in 2011, all while sharing nearly identical components. There's no reason to believe that they can't do the same for the Trent XWB that powers the A350. But even if Airbus can make the jet more efficient through small refinements, a bigger problem still remains. It kind of already has a plane to compete with the 787-9. That plane, the A330-900neo, does have its limitations. It's not as efficient as the 787, nor can it match its range. However, it's more cost effective for many airlines, which is absolutely critical. Now, I've already done a video discussing the NEO's economics in detail, which I'll link in the description below that like button. I highly recommend you check it out. But in short, Airbus would be able to sell the NEO for cheaper than the A350-800 and still turn a profit. Considering many airlines will remain in cost-cutting mode for the foreseeable future, this lower upfront cost is likely to be more appealing than a more efficient but more expensive jet. After evaluating all of these factors, it unfortunately seems that the cons outweigh the pros. Sure, it would be really nice for Airbus to have a direct competitor to the 787-9, especially given the circumstances. But Airbus already has a good enough stopgap to keep some level of competitive pressure on Boeing. And while they might not dominate with medium-sized twins, they are set to dominate the equally important mid-market segment. Ultimately, the time and effort needed to build the 800 would best be suited elsewhere. And just like each of history's other abandoned aircraft, the baby A350 will never take to the skies. You know, whenever I look at a render of what the A350-800 would have looked like, it always looks a little off to me. Like its proportions are just kind of weird. What do you guys think? Do you think it's a weird looking plane too, or do you like it? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to join the Patreon community and help this channel to grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.